Hello and welcome, beautiful cosmic souls, beautiful beings. My name is Eve. My channel is Eve44.4. I'm bringing in a video that is ultimately a continuation of what I just posted on Instagram. So if you are interested in checking that out, my Instagram handle is listed below, eve.ellie. And I also have an upcoming astrology form here on Sunday, January 28th, between 2 to 3.45, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. People are welcome in person or over Zoom. All that information is up on my website. So please know to just look below in the description if you are interested in attending this. I am doing them approximately every five weeks. So what are we looking at here today? I'm going to be going into the astro numerology and then we will do the different piles bringing in the messages all of the timestamps will be below if you do want to jump ahead however i feel like the astro numerology information is very very important because it sets us up for the background of what is going on in our lives right now the energies that are coming in here we are as i'm filming this on January 20th, 2024. However, the video will go out on the 21st. We are in an 11 energy today. We had the Sun-Pluto conjunction. The Sun is birthing itself through Pluto, and Pluto is the great transformer. It, it transmutes all energy into something new. In essence, Pluto is an alchemizer, if you will. And I talked about that a little bit on my Instagram video. What is the sun doing as it goes through Pluto? It does it once a year. This time, though, is incredibly powerful because the sun is meeting up with Pluto on the same day that both planets are leaving Capricorn and entering Aquarius. So earlier this morning, here in Pacific time, we had the sun conjunct Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn and 59 minutes in astrology. For those of you that know astrology at all, it is one minute away from the next sign, which is Aquarius. And so what is happening with this energy is the sun is ultimately birthing the age of Aquarius. There is a birthing of the energy of Aquarius, a deepening of this energy on to planet earth there's lots of energetic codes symbols light rays coming in from all of the cosmic and higher realms we are being filled with a tremendous amount of light and this is going to be going on while the planets traverse and complete their time in capricorn and then complete their time in, De in aquarius so if you want to just know the timing for this as I said, the Sun and Pluto are the first two energies to come in to the Aquarian energetics. And Pluto will be in the sign of Aquarius for a little over nine months. It will re-enter Capricorn at that 29 degree. It won't go any further back into Capricorn. A, a little bit less than three months. So it will be September, October, though I believe the third week of November of 2024, Pluto will re-enter Capricorn, but it's going to be staying at that 29 degrees. And in astrology, 29 is all about completions and endings of very old, ancient cycles. And when I say ancient, these could be cycles your soul has been on for a very long time. We're not just looking at a cycle in this lifetime. When Pluto is wrapping its energy up like that, it is telling you that the work has been done. Now let's move into this very new and very different playing field because we're, we're going from earth to air. Right there, there's a change of elements. And while Pluto's been in Capricorn, which will complete a 16-year cycle here when this is all done and good, it's Earth. Capricorn is Earth. And Capricorn is being organized, planning, taking everything step by steps, being the CEO, the manager of your life, learning how 
to create success, to figure out what your mission is, follow your career on the earth plane. Capricorn and Taurus specifically are the signs of wanting to create whatever form of wealth and abundance that we can. But Capricorn is different than Taurus. Capricorn is the planner and the organizer, and it does not shy away from doing all of the hard work necessary to get there. So whereas Taurus would like to make a lot of money and live well, and not just live well, but Taurus wants to live with pleasure. They don't want it to just be all about hard work. They want to work, they want to make the money, but then they want to have a really good time with it too. Capricorn is the sign of the workaholic, where the drive could be more about bringing in something that is going to benefit those that we leave behind. So the Capricorn energy has been setting us all up towards our future, that we want to create a brand new earth. And think about this, Capricorn precedes Aquarius, which is the sign of the new earth. So we have to go through the energy of Capricorn to get to Aquarius. And the sun being the very first planet to go through this is saying that the part of us that is going through this death and rebirth is our very identity itself because the sun represents our, apps, our actual identity, how we see ourselves on this earth and who we really are. So what Pluto is doing with us all today is it's showing us, it's unveiling to us why we're here and who we are. If you are willing to do that extra leap of faith, we all, we're always going to have work to do. These things aren't going to just come up and be put in our laps. The good news here though, is that we're completing the cycle of Capricorn. And Pluto and Capricorn has been about very hard work. And so if you've been diligent, you've been organized, you've been really applying yourself in the last decade to 16 years and beyond, please know that I feel like there's some beautiful new beginnings coming into your life. And in, in essence, it's going to be a reward for the work that you've already done because through Capricorn, Pluto has created the foundation and we've had for quite a number of years now, a lot of energy in Taurus as well. And Taurus is also the master builder and the architect. So these two energies together, both Taurus and the Capricorn has been building essentially the castle, the city, the mansion that we now want to inhabit. All right. And with Aquarius, it's all about air. Communication is going to be a central theme. Um, Aquarius is the hive mentality. It's where we first, where we first really meet up with the fact that we are all interconnected. When we come to the last two signs in astrology, Aquarius and Pisces, we can no longer be separated from the divine. We can no longer be separated or feel that aloneness because we know that we are always part of something much larger and that we are part of the beehive or the ant hive, if you will. Each and every one of us is contributing to what is being created on planet Earth. And Aquarius is the symbol of the new Earth. It's Aquarius is the sign of where we all live together as a community. We share equally. We communicate. We don't hide things. Aquarius is, is an energy of telepathy where we can literally connect with one another energetically through telepathy. We share information. It's not about hoarding knowledge. There's nothing in Aquarius that is about hoarding anything. And that's why as we enter this beautiful Aquarius age, there's going to be a lot of revelations, a lot more information and knowledge is going to come forward. And Pluto in Aquarius is going to be here for 22 years. And this is so fabulous. It's almost a light, a lightness that I'm feeling. You know, I have a lot of Aquarius energy in my chart, even though I'm a Pisces. And that sense of oneness, of connectedness is where I live. 
That's why I don't ever feel alone. I might, get, I might get lonely sometimes, but I don't feel alone because I feel connected to everything. Aquarius also rules humanitarianism along with Pisces rules, rules that as well. But Aquarius rules taking care of all of the denizens of planet Earth, all of the animals, the plant medicine, wanting to build a community called Earth where we finally aren't just humans. We are now actually Earth beings. We are angelic. We are cosmic Earth beings because we are sharing this planet in synchronicity with everything here. And that's what Aqu Aquarius ultimately represents. So the numerology today is also incredibly powerful. We had it preceded with the new moon in Capricorn here on January 11th. We had an 11 portal that day. And today here on January 20th, we have the second 11 portal of this month. We will have one more on the 29th of January. And what does that mean? Well, we are in an eight universal year. Eight is the number of infinity. It's also the number where we're meeting up with destiny, with our karma and our dharma. And eight is ruled by Saturn. And it's funny because Saturn rules is the original ruler of Aquarius, while the more modern ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. And so Saturn is showing us what our mission is, what our destiny is, but it's also guiding us to any unfinished business or contracts that we do want to complete. And then Uranus is the great awakener. It's the revolutionary, but Uranus ultimately in Aquarius represents the revolution and the evolution of consciousness. And this is where we are now standing. Beautiful energy. So we have the universal year of eight, and then with January as one, eight and one is nine. And then today with two, that makes an 11 because 20 is a two. So that's how I got to that number for those of you that wanted to know where it came from. Very powerful energies. And then in February, we're having a lineup again of Aquarius. We will have Mercury conjoined Pluto there, I believe on the 5th of February. I'll put all of the dates below. I don't have my calendar in front of me. And then we will have Mars meet up with Pluto and Aquarius, all at zero degrees. And then finally, we will have Venus meet up with Pluto at zero Aquarius, almost zero, zero one. And then we will have the Venus-Mars conjunction in Aquarius. So we have one, two, three, four, five more alignments or conjunction in, in, conjunctions in Aquarius. I'm trying to talk so fast. That's an Aquarian um, quality, by the way. It's not normally my nature, though. I'm very soft-spoken and slow. But something's telling me to go fast. There's a fast energy with us today. I feel like things are coming in like lightning. And lightning speed is the word that I'm getting here. So these other planetary conjunctions that I'm referring to are all occurring in the month of February. I believe the last one is going to be on February 21st, 20th or 21st, the Venus-Mars conjunction at six degrees of Aquarius. So do follow these energies. We're going to be in this pretty much through February, even in through the first 10 days of March, because both Venus and Mars are going to keep the Aquarius energy going into March as Pisces is coming in to beautifully blend with it. We've got a powerhouse of days and weeks to look forward to here. And that's why I wanted to really tap into the messages today around this and just look to see what comes up for us, okay? And please know I'm going to follow this with a video, which will be another continuation and adding on, if you will, for the Chinese New Year, because we have the Chinese New Year here on the 10th of February. We will have the new moon in Aquarius on the 9th. So as we go into February, that's a two month, two number month in an eight year, that's 10. And then 
nine would be 19. That's going to be a fabulous energy, energy of the sun. It's all about illumination. And we can reduce that to a one. So this next, we almost have two new moons in a row with that very strong one vibration, which is all about new beginnings. But then guess what? The Chinese New Year always starts at midnight at the end of the day of that new moon. So at midnight, that will start on February 10th. We've got another 11 energy there because we have 1010 actually. We're going to have a 1010 in February for the, the wood dragon year, beautiful birthing energy. And I just kind of getting everyone ready for that energy. So look for number one, 1010, 1111. You're going to be seeing a lot of that. And finally, before I get into the piles, I just wanted to bring your attention to your own personal astrology and your charts. Get it out. Look at your numerology as well. Your numerology is calculated, calculated by adding together your month, your day, and your year of birth. Do not reduce the year. Add the year all together. If it's 12, keep it at 12. If it's 25, keep it at 25. And then reduce the month and reduce the day and add it to it to get a final number. Never reduce it though if it's an 11 or 22. Just add it in. You want to see what your life path is to see if you've got any numbers that show up as 29 or if you have any zeros or if you have any 11s or 10s. That is going to be significant here for you. And then in your astrological chart, you want to look to see if on any of your big angles, which is your rising sign, your midheaven, your planets, the nodes of your moon, if you have anything at 29 degrees or zero degrees, and I do not care what the sign language is. This We're talking numerology now. You have anything at that 29 or zero degrees, you're going to be feeling this energy very, very strongly. So do that looking into your chart or your at least your life path your numbers to see if any of this resonates for you it's going to give you some extra guidance here and then of course those of you that happen to have planets including your sun sign any planet at all at 29 of capricorn into the first degrees of aquarius you know you're going to be front and center here and also it's polar complement. So that would be anyone born with 29 degrees of cancer and any war from zero to like the first few degrees of Leo, you're going to be feeling this energy very strongly as well. So let's get into the piles here for pile number one. And so choose it based on the crystal. I have, I'm going to just show you the card. It's Dioptase, number seven. It's a beautiful emerald green. I don't happen to have Dioptase, so I'm using my beautiful green Moldavite. Then for pile number two, we have Aquamarine, number three. So choose it based on what's resonating for you. And I actually do have a beautiful piece of Aquamarine. And then for pile number three, it's chrysoprase. And let's see, that's number four. It's a beautiful light blue. And I happen to have a very small piece of that. Um, I also have a beautiful necklace of chrysoprase. And I just kind of wanted to show you this beautiful energy. Okay. So go ahead and pick your pile. Take your time with each one. I have oracle cards. The first messages are from the heart archangels, and it's about your blessing. The second message is what the new beginnings are in your life. And for each deck, it's a different tarot deck that I'm using. So for the pile number one, the dioptase, I'm using the, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to look at it. I can't even remember the gilded tarot. Okay. And then then, then for the aquamarine, I'm using the Syrian seed tarot. And then for the third one, the chrysoprase, I'm using the mermaid tarot. 
Okay, so that if that helps you choose an option, go ahead and choose it. And just know that we're looking at the blessings, what new beginnings are wanting to come in to your life through this portal of Aquarian energy. And then what is the advice and what is the action or, and the extra energies that are surrounding this. So let's start with pile number one here. Those of you that chose, let me put that over there, chose this beautiful Moldavite. And you know, Moldavite is a stone of very high consciousness. It's actually an extraterrestrial stone. You have to want to be really awakened in order to use this. So be very careful when you use Moldavite. It's not to be used lightly. It's not for the novice. And it's interesting because the stone dioptase, and I really do want to get some of this. So this is pile number one. It's a beautiful, dark, deep emerald green on a rose background there. And the number is seven. And the dioptase with the number seven, it's working with our spiritual field. So those of you that chose number one, and of course the Moldavite fits that too. It's a spiritual stone. The energy that you're working with is on the spiritual level. It's within your light body itself and your spiritual body. Dioptase is one of the most profound stones like Moldavite that one can, one can work with. And I only recommend working with it when you feel like there is a core wound within your very soul matrix. Because Dioptase is here to pull out a core wound that has lodged itself within your light body somewhere in your light body and our light bodies can go through the different dimensions so it could be in the light body part of you that's in the fifth dimension the seventh the ninth but dioptase is that beautiful crystal that will help you unveil whatever wounded whatever wound or crack crack in your own matrix is what i'm getting that you want to be revealed and you want to completely resolve. So this is not for the faint of heart pile number one. Those of you that chose this, you might be doing some very deep shadow work or shadow diving is what I'm seeing. And you're unveiling whatever discomfort lies within you. I have a dear friend I was talking to today, and if I hope he watches this video, he'll know I'm referring to him. I think this is the pile he should take because the diaptase speaks to those of you that have felt some form of discomfort or dis-ease, like a feeling of discomfort, anxiousness, something sitting so deep within you, you can't access it. You don't know what it is, but it doesn't fully leave you. It'll leave for a bit and then it'll come back. And you're always aware that there's something that's out of sync in your very, in your energetic field itself. And this would then be your pile. And please go out and see if you can't find or buy dioptase. Okay, so that would be my counsel, pile number one. So let's look at the heart archangels, which beautiful archangel is bringing you a blessing. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. And of course, it's Archangel Raphael. So pile number one, there could be a profound healing that you're going through right now. But also you might be my healer pile, that you're in the healing field. You've, you've been on a path of profound healing for a very long time. And I love it because Archangel Raphael is telling you he's here to work with you. Call on him. And of course, it's the emerald green energy, right? That's one of the healing energies. And the message he's bringing to you He's coming into your life to bless you with harmony. Pile one, you've been on a very long journey is what I'm feeling. You've been through many, many lifetimes. All of you that, that answered this call to pile one, you're old souls. You've been through many lifetimes, whether they've been on the earth or elsewhere, and you've grown deep roots. You've left a lot of codes on this earth, and you are coming into inner union within the self. That's what I'm getting from this. So your word is harmony and your prayers are, have been heard. It's like these beautiful hands of the divine are reaching out to you to tell you your prayers have been heard. 
and the doves of peace are coming in for you now. You know, I want to go back to the stone, Dioptes. Dio. Dio is Dios. It's one of the original names for God, just like El is in Sanskrit. Dio is the Latin word for, for God. So you are here doing God's work. You are unveiling something again within your God self that needs to be unveiled. And in doing so, you are reaching a place of profound harmony. Your blessing this year is harmony, deep inner sacred union. And this could also be union with others, union in your soul community group, union in friendships and family, but it could also be a divine love union. I want to look at Archangel Raphael. He's the holy healer. He's shining this exquisite emerald green orb of the heart healing love here. It's illustrating for you through the unfolding hands of Mother Earth as she flourishes through the boundless peace and love of the sacred tree of life. So you are being gifted with the sacred tree of life the Kabbalah, right? So some of you watching this may have spent many lifetimes on religious pathways, and you may currently be very religious on a specific pathway, but you are being blessed with this right now. And the earth is blessing you from the tree of life. She is reminding you of your unfolding evolutionary capacity and that you are here for the well-being of the planet. So pile number one, you're my healers and you're my humanitarians. You are here for the greater conscious evolution of planet Earth. You are meant to do something for the planet. Perhaps you love nutrition. Many of you might be vegetarians or vegans. Perhaps you're, I'm feeling acupuncturist, Reiki masters, yoga teachers. So what is the other message Archangel Raphael wants to give you? If there is a lack of harmony in your life, please know that Divine Mother Earth through Raphael, the divine energy of Mother is coming in through the Earth and through Raphael is going to bring you back into harmony. Surrender to the Divine Mother and you will reach your unfolding creativity. So I'm also getting a message here of profound creativity wanting to come through you. I'm getting a lot of abundance in this card, pile number one. So I'm almost dying to see what the other cards are here for you. I want to see if we have some abundance messages. So the last guidance here from Archangel Raphael and Divine Mother is to chant a song of praise through your throat chakra. And the, the song is Ha. So it's H I. Ha. And just hold that tone. Beautiful. So let's look and see what are these new beginnings coming in? Because we know you're going towards great healing, or perhaps your path as a healer is further unfolding. And I think you're moving towards greater abundance and harmony in your life. So let's see what the Tarot wants to say to us. Interesting. The first card is the Seven of Cups. And I love it in this deck, the Gilded Tarot, because in each one of these cups is actually something you want, right? There's something spiritual in each one of these cups. You've got a beautiful the doves of peace. Oh, wow. It just hit me. The doves of peace. We've got this beautiful woman with a crown. We've got the wings, the two rings together. We have the rose. We have the castle. We have the dragon breathing fire. And we have a, the phoenix. I believe that's the phoenix there in the bottom. And we have the doves. You are, and the doves is one of the cups at the top. So it's one of the higher cups. You know, the seven of cups can represent going up the stairway, the spiritual stairway 
till you reach the seventh cup. And guess what? In the beginning, this is number seven, is it not? That's the spiritual pathway, the spiritual leader. So you have been on a pathway, and you could have been on this for seven years. You could have been on it for seven months. But seven weeks, no, that would be too, too soon. I'm seeing seven months, but more likely seven years and even longer. And you've been trying out, you've been drinking from every single cup so that you become a master because number seven is one of the numbers of self-mastery to become the spiritual teacher, which is number seven. I love this. And we have the doves there. So that seven of cups, you've been filling your cup with all the things you actually need. And the final thing you're getting is peace. And I, oh my gosh, I love this. This is when I sit back and I am in such awe of, of, the, of, of our guides of the cosmos, because here we are entering the wood dragon, the year of the dragon. And the two cups at the top here are the doves, which we have in the card of Archangel Raphael, and the dragon. This is your year pile number one. I think this is about incredible abundance, but I think it's about your destiny. And the minute we get fully on our destiny, abundance in all forms is what comes to us, right? So let's look at the next card. Wow, we've got the tower though. So in, on this journey that you've been on, you've had to go through some towers, through some very sudden things falling apart and collapsing in your life. And for some of you, and I have a very specific person in mind, a couple people are coming to my mind already that I know that are clients. And they've had a tower moment very, very recently. And understand you, the tower had to happen. This is not where you were meant to be anymore. It's not where you're going. Okay. So your new beginning, you're leaving the seven cups because you now have an an idea of what you've mastered. You've reached a place of some form of self-mastery here and self-understanding and self-realization. So you had to leave the things that are not in alignment with you, right? And they could have happened overnight and someone else could have brought the tower moment to you, okay? Oh, wow, this is so beautiful. And it's followed by the star because you're meant to be a star. Your dreams are waiting for you. Pile number one, you are meant to be seen in this world. The world is waiting for you. You have something profound to contribute, okay? So your new beginning is in the world to reach for the stars. I, it's such a beautiful visual too. She's literally, she has her um, cup. And oh, I gotta, gotta make sure I do this. I didn't even realize. Okay, sorry about that. So she, she's bringing in the cup of water and she's bringing it to her chalice. And the chalice is sitting in the cosmos in the stars. So you're filling your cup and you know exactly what you need. You know exactly what you need. But in this specific card of the star, what I love, and it's too bad I can't really show you the picture, okay? But she's holding a cup in one hand and one in the other like this, like she's pouring from one cup into the ocean and getting water from the ocean into the other cup. So we've got the energy of alchemy, of temperance there. So please know how number one, that you need, you might have to work to this right here, that you might have a little bit more time to go here. And you know, Archangel Raphael is the archangel that rules the element of earth. So one of the messages here could be one of still a little bit more patience because you have a little bit further to go here. So I'm going to put that card right there, leave it there. And then what are you bringing in? You're the magician. You're absolutely manifesting whatever it is you want to manifest. You're the star and you are the magician. You're the alchemist here. So I'm getting that energy of two. And look at that. We've got the infinity symbol here, don't we? So this is your year 
I'm going to say pile number one. You may see a lot of seven, seven, because we've got that number prevalent. And we also have the infinity symbol, which is eight. So you might be seeing a lot of eight, eight, eight as well. And seven or eight might be your life path. Okay. Please pay attention because that is the universe bringing things to you. And what are you, what is the magician manifesting? Wow. The page of pentacles. You're manifesting greater abundance in your life. But it's the page. So you're starting something brand new. It's going to bring wonderful abundance in there. So pile number one, I really am feeling here a lot of earth and water energy. You could be those, those of my dear clients or people watching this. Maybe you have a lot of earth in your chart. You have a lot of water in your chart. There's a beautiful balance here between earth and water. And I love it too because we have the magician here followed by the page of pentacles. And it's, I mean, look at that, right? In the card of the magician is that exact same pentacle. Yeah, you're bringing in something that's going to be very stable, pile number one. So you're creating abundance. I feel it's about your job. I feel like it's about abundance, your destiny. Though, mind you, we have the seven of cups here. So there could be something around love that wants to show up as well. Let's see what the rest of the cards want to bring in. So I pulled a message from Archangel Michael. He, I wasn't planning to do this at all, but I was feeling his energy with us so strongly today. So what is Archangel's, Archangel Michael's word of advice for you? Your home is protected by angels. Beautiful message. You're protected. Your path, your destiny is protected. Everything in your life on your journey is being protected by angels. So let me read that for you. And this is a thank you message. This is your prayer, Archangel Michael. Thank you for watching over my home and all of its inhabitants. I ask that you post guardian angels at each window and door, ensuring its security. So he's saying, call me in and call in my legions of angels to be with you on this journey. Thank you for guiding my finances so that I can, I can easily afford to pay my rent, my mortgage, taxes, or whatever you need. So your home, but also your destiny and your finances and your family too are all being protected by Archangel Michael and your guardian angels. I love that message. So your advice is feel safe here. Let go of any fear that you're not going to be okay because you, you're going to be better than okay. And lastly, uh, the goddesses were screaming to me too. So what do the goddesses want to say? So this is like any kind of action you need to take or any last piece of advice of something. Oh, wow. That is incredible. Wow. Wow. Well, we've got the manifester, the magician twice. We had the mat, we had the magician, and now we have the sorceress. She's the high priestess. You're the manifester. We're getting it across the board. You are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. We're getting the energy of winter here, which is the season we're in. So right now, pile number one, I feel like things are moving fast. But what she's saying to you is in the winter season. And winter season can be any day of the year, but for you, it's your winter season, okay? Get me with that? Meaning the season of winter is the season where you plant your seeds. You get your intentions, you get clarity, you get your intentions straight, and then you plant the seeds of what you want to manifest. That's the winter season for you. And your manifestation needs to come in, I'm feeling, as we go towards a full moon. So it's, it's as the moon is getting very strong in its fullness. So that would be the first three days going into the full moon. So pile number one, I feel like something's coming. We've got a full moon here in, in about a week. Yeah. Beautiful. Please move forward with whatever you want to manifest. Oh, and your last message is Lakshmi. You have a bright future. You're being protected. Ganesha, the remover of obstacles, is removing whatever's in your way. But ask Ganesha to help, help you. Lakshmi, 
you have a bright future. Stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. Wow. So pile number one, I really feel like this is about your mission, your destiny, your career. If some of you have been going through a lot of healing, then she's saying your healing is going to reach completion and there's going to be an amazing pathway ahead of you. So it's wonderful for those of you that have health questions, that are concerned about your destiny or your career or your finances. There's wonderful positive messages here. All righty. Hoping this resonates with you. Wishing you all so much love. Sending you a lot of hugs. And please subscribe to my channel if you like my messages. I don't post on YouTube more than like three times, like every three weeks. This time I might post it within two weeks though, because um, the messages coming in are big. Uh, but on Instagram, I post at least once a week, sometimes more often. Please follow me, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much. So that's my pile number one. Let's go to pile number two. Those of you that chose the aquamarine. Now, aquamarine is the stone of Pisces. and But it's so interesting, and it's number three. So perhaps the vibration of three is significant for you. Three is the number of the communicator. Uh, it's also the number of messages of the messenger. So messages could be coming in. There could be a lot of communication going on around you. It also rules your solar plexus. So maybe you're wanting to work with that. And it's also involved with the throat. It's about speaking your truth. Aquamarine. It's a spiritual stone. The aquamarine comes from the soul heart. So we all have our heart, our physical heart, and our light body and our soul heart. It's our crystalline soul heart. Aquamarine is messages coming to us from our soul heart. So this is a heart message, pile number two. So for you right away, I'm getting a lot of water energy. You know, of course, aquamarine is Pisces. So you could be Scorpios, Cancers, Pisces, or have a lot of that in your, in your chart. Aquamarine has a message. Aqua also is Aquarius. Okay, so that's the one other sign I'm going to put into this. Aqua, my aquas, right? The Aquarians, even though, Aqua, even though Aquarius is a air energy. But remember, we're going into the time of Aquarius, right? So Aquamarine should be a stone we bring with us. So pile number two, you want to make sure you have aquamarine, all right? And it's going to help you clear heart energy, but also it's a blue. So it's helping you clear your, th your throat chakra as well. And aquamarine is also telling you, pile number two, that you come from a water world. You're a cosmic being. You're an angel who's come to earth. And you come from a water world like I do. I come from one of the worlds I know I have been and spent many lifetimes on is Mintaka. I don't know that my or that I'm originally a Mintaka, and I know I have Lyran or Lyran in me as well, and some Andromedan. But Mintaka is what speaks to my heart and my soul, and that is a water world. It's where the origins of Avatar and the water world comes from. It's where the origins of the dolphins are and the whale, the whales as well, the, the Akashic record keepers. So if you resonate with marine life, with water, this is probably the pile for you. So let me put that here, keep that right there. So let's see what beautiful heart archangel is blessing you. Archangel Zafkael or Zafkael, yep, Zafkael. He is a heart archangel, and he works with the ruby red energy. He works, he's one of the lovers too, is if I remember correctly. I'm going to look in my guide here. I haven't looked at the guide here for this these archangels for quite a while. But Zafkael, I believe, is one of the love archangels, not just a heart archangel. And what he's bringing to you 
is the essence of awe. And it's the ruby red, which is deep, profound, cosmic passion. Ruby red isn't just root chakra. It's cosmic, light body, root energy. Okay, so it's that cosmic ruby energy. So let's look at what Safkael is wanting to bring in for us. What a beautiful name, right? He's the sacred lover. I was right. I love that. The sacred lover. What he is bringing us, what he is gifting us, the blessing is awe. When we might need a little extra reminding of our true essence, he's coming in to show you and to remind you of who and what you really are, what you really are, and what you are is divine. You are a divine being having a human expression. You see awe and joy are the wondrous gatekeepers to the pathway of the divine. And spiritual curiosity leads us to this gateway so that we may fly to heaven. And in this, it's, it's a picture, I believe, of the symbol is in the icon, it's Jupiter, the king of the gods, assuming the body of an eagle, which is the symbol of triumphant spirit, spirit taking the beautiful, I think she was a fairy of some type, um, a, a sprite or something like that, Ganymede, into heaven. He, he gazed on her infinite beauty, and so he transformed himself into an eagle to make love to Ganymede, okay? And he took her into heaven. And I can't remember which demigod came from this union, was it Perseus? I don't know. It might have been Perseus. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to put that down below, pile number two. But Jupiter is Zeus in, Gre in the Greco-Roman mythology. And he often liked to take the form of the eagle, which is the form of spirit. And so for pile number two, what I'm getting is this year is about your divinity, about deepening your spiritual body, the connection to your spiritual body, which would make sense because aquamarine is the stone of the angel. It's about angel love. And so you're here to deepen your spirit, but also you're getting the energy of sacred love. So gaze on this exquisite icon and feel that soulful part of you that needs to be enriched by beauty, the infinite, and joy. So your pathways into bliss, because awe is a pathway into bliss. It's awe and joy. These are the gatekeepers piled to, to your bliss. So every day, seek out joy and seek out awe. Awe is when your mouth falls open, right? Awe, awe, right? Something catches your attention, and in that moment, you are frozen with a look of absolute surprise. But at the same time, in that surprise, something beautiful is capturing you. The state of awe is a state of bliss. So what Zafkael is guiding you to do is to chant ha and he through your heart and your crown. And this will help you on your path of ascension. So Zafkael, Archangel Zafkael, is one of the archangels on the pathway of ascension. So piled number two in this year of 2024, whenever you're watching this video, you are on the ascension pathway and you are moving very rapidly on that path. So I'm very curious to see what new beginnings are coming into your life. But I would like you to chant ha and he while you're focusing on your heart and your crown. All right, beautiful messages. So let's see what the tarot are guiding pile number two. Okay, this seems to be out of balance here. Okay, what, wait a minute, which card? Okay, beautiful. I think that was the first one, yep. Wow. I am in awe already. 
you have the high priestess. So the new beginning in your life is profound wisdom. Pile number two, you're the wise ones. You're the ones that carry the high priestess within your very being. You walk the path of Persephone in the Greco-Roman mythology. You carry the Trinity within you. You're an angel. You're a cosmic angel. But you come from the cosmic world. I'm feeling the energy here of Syria. I really, really am. And this is the Syrian tarot deck. But I know in a lot of the cards, we don't have this symbol. This may be the only card where we have this symbol. I believe it is like this. And we have the number three again. And you are the number three, Aquamarine. We have the triple three. You might be seeing three, three. You are bringing in infinite abundance, but it's coming in through your ability to embody the states of awe, joy, and beauty. And you are wisdom, honey. Whoever you are watching this, you are wisdom. You are wisdom keepers here. And you are becoming more, and you're tapping into that wisdom, okay? So that is a beautiful message. And the second one that came in is the three of chalices. So you are bringing in abundance and wisdom and you're sharing it. You're not doing it alone. You're sharing it with others. Perhaps you're doing it in a group setting. Perhaps you're growing a business with others and you're all doing this together. You're doing, it through, you're doing this or creating this through community consciousness. But pile number two, I feel like there's many things you're going to be celebrating this year and you're going to be perhaps celebrating a marriage or you're going to many weddings or you're going to engagement parties. Perhaps there's a birth of a child. This could be birthing of ideas, but the three of chalices is about celebrating your life and sharing it with those of like mind. And we have it along with the high priestess and abundance. And it could be that you're going to have an abundance of cups too, an abundance of love in your life, whether it's an abundance of friendships or perhaps there's an abundance in your romantic life. Maybe you're meeting that sacred divine counterpart. Maybe you're coming into a higher form within your relationship. Perhaps it's going to the next level, whatever that is. And the other two cards, there are two or three. Yep. The star seed, you're bringing in brand new beginnings here. So pile two, you are creating new beginnings, but they're different because star seed is the fool. You are bringing cosmic energy, divine wisdom and knowledge to the earth. Yep, you came to earth to bring this wisdom. This, this pile number two, so far, you're the ones I'm going to strongly suggest jump onto my Instagram and watch it because one or two of those piles is going to resonate with you. Okay. That follows this message, but you're a star seed. You came here as for a mission on this earth and you came to plant some very beautiful things here. Okay. And you came here with divine knowledge. And then the last card is the sage or the queen of chalices. You contain everything you need pile number two, but there's also a beautiful cup of love here. So I feel pile number two that, and we know Archangel Zafkayal is the sacred lover. I think you're bringing in beautiful love into your life. And if you're not already with a divine counterpart, I am absolutely certain that one is coming in. And sometimes divine counterparts can also be friendships though. So keep that in mind. But there's not going to be any lack of love here. It is surrounding you completely. So let's look at your last piece of advice from, oh, wow, from Archangel Michael. New beginnings and a fresh start. So pile two, I love it. And so much water energy. You must be my water pile. You've got to have strong water somewhere. Or perhaps you're just embodying your heart energy, right? That soul heart energy. New beginnings. So you want to thank Archangel Michael and the divine for bringing new opportunities to you because that's what coming in, that what's coming in. You have new beginnings, a fresh start, a 
A lot of new opportunities are on the horizon. He's standing above the earth. So pile number two, it could be that what your mission is going to be global. You could be doing a lot of traveling on the earth. Your work could take you to many places on the earth. You may be moving. You may be decide, you may decide to be a nomad as well. Getting a lot of beautiful messages here. So ask Archangel Michael to help you with this new beginning, but also to help you release and heal anything that you might still be carrying from your past. So he says, fill you. He wants you to ask him to fill you with trust so that you can easily experience these very big life changes. So let's complete with the goddesses so we can see what these life changes are. I love it. You have a mission in the arts. So you might be incredibly creative. Perhaps you're in the aesthetics world. Perhaps you're a writer. Perhaps you're a musician, an entertainer. Maybe you're a designer, a painter, a dancer, a singer. You might write music. You might write poetry. Whatever it is, you have incredible creativity. And this is also the state of grace. Express yourself through creative activities. That pile number two, you not only carry infinite wisdom, you carry a lot of creativity. And you need to express things. New beginnings are waiting for you in the fields of creativity. And that could be creating soaps, perfumes, a new makeup line, cosmetics that's very humanitarian and earthly. I'm feeling for you as well, because Saraswati is the, one of the Hindu goddesses. She's not only the patron saints of the arts, she also rules beauty and the state of grace because she has the swan here. Um, you often find her working with yogis. So maybe those of you that are watching this, your yoga teachers or your Reiki masters, you're involved in the healing fields as well, but it's time for you to invest in the artistic side of you. And lastly, we have green Tara. Got all this green energy. We have green energy everywhere. You are completely opening up your heart pile too. Green Tara says, start delegating. Don't do this by yourself, right? Don't. We have chalices. Do this in alignment with others. Ask for help whenever you need to. Don't take on things that are a lot for you to do just on your own. But she's also saying to you, it's no longer going to be a solo road for you. You're doing this with others. I love these messages. All righty, Paul, pile number two. I hope you like the messages. Sending you so much love, so, so many blessings on your journey. If you like the messages I bring through, know that I usually bring in a YouTube video about once every three weeks. Right now, I'll, I'll probably be doing two within two weeks just because I want to bring one in for the Chinese New Year. And I'm going to really focus deeply on that. And it's going to follow this video. So some of these messages are going to be very synchronistic, if you will. But subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you like these mes messages and they resonate for you. Sending you all so much love. Pile number three. All righty. Hello, pile number three. Those of you that chose the chrysoprase, let's look at what beautiful messages are coming in here for you. What are your blessings, the new beginnings, the advice from Archangel Michael, and the goddess realm. First off, though, let's look at the stone that you chose. It's chrysoprase. It is a mental stone. It's here to help us reach higher mental faculties. It is helping us clear things out of our lower mind, which is usually where our greatest fears live, so that we can access and have more clarity within our high mind. So for those of you that chose pile number three, you could very well have, have anxiety. There could have been times in your life where you've had depression on and off. You could just be someone that's indecisive. You, ha you feel like you always have a lack of clarity. 
you get you get confused easily so the chrysoprase energy is here to help you work with stabilizing your mind removing cobwebs chrysoprase is about removing distractions that's what i'm being told so when you decide to work with this stone so i strongly suggest you you buy it if you can and work with it because it also helps with the throat chakra you are removing any mental unclarity you have or your tendency towards indecisiveness or you get anxious too easily you're wanting to ground your mental energy into your physical body and to do that you need to access your throat chakra you need to work with and open up your throat chakra and it's really interesting because the seed quartz came out with this and i did not notice and the seed quartz is about magnifying whatever crystal it comes out with so there's a magnification here of that chrysoprase energy where you really need clarity here see the seed quartz how clear they are pile number three i really sense you've been going through a lot of confusion that and, and a lot of it may not even be coming from you is what i'm getting you could be involved in situations where there's a lot of other players there's maybe misinformation, people that aren't giving you accurate information, something about information here. And you're wanting to clear the decks of anything that does not feel clear to you. You don't want confusion around you. Around you. you don't want drama. You don't want gossip. That's what I'm getting. But also, chrysoprase is a crystal of courage and originality. It's asking you to speak your truth, stand in your power, build the inner courage within you to stand up for what you believe, stand up for yourself. That's the big message I'm getting here with this. And that I think, pile number three, you've been on a journey already where you've been working very profoundly with that throat chakra, with wanting to speak your truth and be more authentic. But to do that, you've got to build inner confidence. That's why it's also an energy of working on inner courage. And maybe you've been doing, doing that this whole time. You've been really building your courage. I'm getting, pile number three, that you've been in a hermit mode, doing a lot of internal work, okay? And, and there's a reason that you've been doing this, okay? Because you're building inner self-confidence and courage and you don't want to enter a situation where you feel confused within yourself. So there's two things that can happen here. One, you can have inner confusion, which then will create anxiety. Another thing that can happen is there can be external confusion that can then create anxiety for you as well. Because pile number three, I feel like you are those where communication matters a lot. All right, it's a very important thing. And so standing in your truth, being authentic, acknowledging your originality and having the courage to completely embody who you are and not be afraid of gossip. Don't be afraid of it. Don't worry about what other people think of you. What someone else thinks of you is none of your business because it doesn't live in your mind, it lives in theirs. Do not give someone else free rent in your mind. Pile three, you're clearing this out, okay? And I love it because the archangel that came in for you is Archangel Gabriel. And he is the great messenger, right? He's the one that rules communication. And so it's so fitting. And what is his message? What is his blessing for you this year? Illumination. He is bringing a beautiful lantern into your darkness. There's clarity coming for you. There's revelation coming for you. Whatever was hidden was hidden for a reason, pile number three. It was either hidden because you weren't ready for the truth. You might have not been ready for it. You maybe were not equipped for it. Number two, the people that had to bring it in, they weren't ready. They didn't know what was going on. There was some kind of an interference 
perhaps you had to go through a dark night of the soul because that's what that's showing me, a dark night of the soul to gain deeper courage and self-confidence so that then the actual truth could be revealed. The illumination is on. The light is on. Let me read from this book. It's a very beautiful message. Archangel Gabriel is the first archangel that ever worked with me. He's such a gentle, tender presence. Illumination. We all seek illumination when experiencing confusion. When we suffer the dullness of pain or while we're enduring the long, dark night of the soul. Have you recently felt in darkness or have you yearned for the light yet you were not able to touch it? You weren't able to bring it in. Now that would be anxiety or depression, right? Do not fret because Gabriel's divine illuminating heart rays are swiftly moving to you from his heart sigil in this card. And so profound relief is going to come in for you. Gaze on his oracle and an enlightening thought will, pa will pass through your consciousness or a deep murmuring will occur in your soul. Your present situation or your most recent one is merely a test of your resolve, an illumining of your soul's eternal strength. For Archangel Gabriel has given his heart to you right now. Oh, when Archangel Gabriel comes, that is a very big deal. He's giving you his heart because you are proving to him that you are worthy of his courageous heart. He's an angel of great courage because he brought so many messages to humans, right? And to other angels. He was the great messenger. Wow, I'm getting so much energy going through me right now. So pile number three, you really need to hear this message. You are a messenger on this earth. Your voice matters. What you have to say has power. You are here in this year to find your power. So Gabriel is simply illuminating it, radiating it, so that you know where your true power lies. And it lies in your voice. It lies in your message, the truth that you carry deep within you. But you have to find the confidence, the strength, the courage, the resolve to become visible with it, to speak it, to persevere. So I'm going to leave you with his mantra, his chant. All the archangels give us a chant. His chant is he, H-E-E, -E, to bring clear light to your crown chakra. So he would like you to visualize your crown as you chant he and then complete it with an om. Now, normally when we do these forms of chantings, you can do it for three times up to seven. You choose how, whatever number of times you want to do the chant. So it would sound like this. He... This will be a form of activating. You really want to chant it out loud because you'll literally hear the vibration and it's going to resonate in your body. Do you know that chanting is our own tuning fork? We don't have to use a tuning fork. We can do it with chanting. And this is going to help you get to that mental clarity. That's exactly what I'm getting. No wonder I had to redo this video. It's the only pile I had to redo. So let's move on to the mermaid to row and see what new beginnings are coming in because we know this is about communication. We know this is about courage and strength and authenticity and that maybe you're moving into some kind of a messenger role, an education role, a teacher role. And you're, there's resonance here with all of these piles in this one reading. This is pretty interesting. So I might have, many of you may decide to watch all three of them. So let's look at what the Tarot is bringing in as your new beginning. Seven of Swords. Now, isn't that interesting? Swords, communication. We're back to that. And in this deck, all the swords are unveiled. You can see them all. 
whatever it is that's being revealed now. The truth is out. Everyone can see it. You can see the players. You know, the Seven of Swords is usually someone trying to sneak away. But in this deck, and remember, I chose a different deck for each pile. You can see, everyone can see the swords. No one can sneak away here, right? Except that one person, there's still, um, yep, the one person, the, the two are, still putting their swords onto that block of ice. So this is still unfolding. It's not quite arrived yet, but I feel, Paul number one, that you have dealt with some pretty big issues in communication. Number one, this could be maybe too many parties were involved, maybe too many viewpoints, maybe there was information withhold, maybe someone lied, perhaps it was just simply confusion. But however it turned out, I am feeling like the truth is coming out. Whatever was hidden, whatever was not revealed, it's going to be revealed. And I am sensing that there could have been purposeful miscommunication or some deliberate withholding, someone not telling the truth for a reason because they had something to gain from it. And um, But don't worry because you're coming out ahead on this. And this can also, the Seven of Swords is a card of gossiping too, where it can be a lot of people get together and spread rumors that are not correct. They may be based on one piece of information and then you know how a rumor goes, right? It builds upon itself and suddenly the fifth person hearing it is hearing a completely different story than the first person. And so whatever this is, this miscommunication, it is being cleared up. The second message I'm getting here, because I'm feeling there might be something coming in here. Yeah, I know there is around friendship and love. So it could be pile number three that there's some betrayal here. That maybe you're saying goodbye to a friend or a friend group. Or this could be something having gone downhill in a romantic relationship. Whether it's your recent past or a little bit further out in your past or it's been occurring just recently um, because I feel like you've been going through a dark night of the soul, whether that's very recent right now or whether you're still healing from it, okay? But this is what you're moving away from. And that's what I want you to remember here, Pile 3, and you're becoming the emperor. Yeah, you're in charge of your own kingdom. You know exactly what is going on because that's Neptune holding the trident sitting on the throne. You know what's going on. No one can no one can tell you an untruth again because you're going to see right through it. So in a way, the emperor in this deck is the keeper of truth. There's a high priest energy here. Now the emperor can also represent someone coming to you. You know that that holds a beautiful emperor energy. They're a master of their own world. Now, the emperor could also mean that, you know, because it came after the Seven of Swords, that there was a manager, a boss, someone had to make a decision on what was going on. And it was not an easy decision to make. But in this card, this emperor looks a little bit upset. So, it could be that the truth had to be unveiled and there was an emperor energy that had to make some big decisions here. And that emperor could be you. Okay, so take it as it resonates. So let me keep going because I feel like there's more messages coming in around this because then it's followed by the four of wands. Your happily ever after is awaiting you. That's a beautiful home, a beautiful family, a beautiful love relationship. Whatever home means to you. The, the Four of Wands is you getting your wish come true. But I feel this has to do with love because it's completed with the lovers. And this is a mirrored soulmate, a sacred soulmate. Because she's looking at herself in the mirror and she's seeing her soulmate. And a castle in the distance. Wow, that is such... A beautiful card and that's reminding me of the little mermaid yeah she can see the castle the lovers right she knows who her real lover is you know and the seven of swords could also also have been you know betrayal and love not just a work environment or a friendship group 
could have been betrayal and love. It could have be that you met just one relationship after another and they were all a pattern of the same type of thing and you're done with that pattern. You've now embraced your courage, stood in your authenticity, and you're the emperor. This is not a gender card, okay? You're the emperor. You are on your throne now, right? And on that throne, you're bringing in the right lover for you, the right love relationship for you, sacred soulmate, whether it's in romantic form or in friendship, and you have your happily ever after there. I really feel this is about love. Yeah. Okay, pile number three. Yeah, you've been through a lot with your love life. And whether this is about new love coming towards you, maybe you've gone through a relationship, you had to walk away, and it was very difficult. Perhaps you had to go through a divorce, or you're going to be going through a divorce. Uh, or maybe you're in a current relationship that's going through a lot of healing, and it's actually getting healed. And you have a second chance at this, okay? So just take this as it resonates for each of you in terms of your situation. So let's look at the advice here from Archangel Michael. And we have two cards. They just flew out. You've learned self-respect. Absolute self-respect. You've been letting go of fear. Let go of fear. There's no place for fear on this journey anymore, Paul Three. Self-respect is what this has been about. And it's, again, you standing in your power with your voice. And the romance angels. We have it. There we have it. It's about love. You have to speak your truth in love. You know, the romance angels are helping you. So call on them along with Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Michael. These are your, your, helpers, your helpers, helpers and your guides. Call on them, please. I love this because the romance angels come in when there's a beautiful soulmate in the midst, in the midst with you. Whether it's someone that you know already, that you're currently involved with them, but you've been going through a lot, someone returning to your life, or someone brand new. This is your journey. And so the last message I want to leave you with is the goddess Cordelia. Go outside. It's time to leave the hermit mode. It's time to go outside and enjoy life again. Celebrate with friends. I'm seeing a spring and early summer energy, so this could be a message of timing. Cordelia is a goddess of springtime and early summer, so it could be you know April, May, June, July. She's just saying get out there, put flowers on your hair, be in nature, jump in the water. You are surrounded by so many beautiful guides. It's time to leave the hermit mode. You don't have to do all of the internal work anymore. It's time to become external. Put yourself out there. I love these messages. So thank you so much. I love you all. If you like my messages, just know I tend to put a video up about every three weeks. Right now it's going to be two two weeks out because I want to bring one in for the Chinese New Year. And subscribe to my channel, give me a comment, thumbs up, and follow me on Instagram. Sending you all so much love.